coming Tuesday. She was a 7th century Celtic mother superior and church reformer who, in the so-called Dark Ages of England, built her own monastery, and you see her standing with the model of it right there. Part of it was for men, part for women. She made it a center of learning and spiritual renewal, and she ruled it with the bishop's authority, hence the crow's ear, the bishop's staff in her hand. But the second hill that is with us today, Hilda Pierce, the Jewish artist who created this painting of St. Hilda. Why would a Jewish Hilda paint a Celtic Christian Hilda? Go figure, what's going on here? Well, I'll tell you. She's presenting it to St. Paul's in honor of Major William and Marjorie Rosevere, a very loving and devout church of England couple who 17 years ago, in 1938, offered their home as a safe haven to Hilda and her parents, and thus saved them from certain death in a Nazi concentration camp. In his own words, she says, they restored my faith in humanity. And you can't have a brighter light in the darkness than that. Hilda van Hilda Harma was a 16-year-old Jewish schoolgirl standing on the curb when Otto Hitler's long caravan of open limos rolled into Vienna on March 13, 1938. He rode right by in front of her, standing in that car with his arm out in the Nazi salute. He was welcomed by millions of ecstatic Austrians, many of them shouting anti-Jewish curses to please the German Fuhrer. All Jews to not die! All Jews to die! Death to all Jews! It was the Anschluss. Hitler's annexation of Austria into the Third Reich. And that Jewish girl knew immediately that she and her parents had to get out of that country as soon as possible and hopefully join relatives in America. But how? Where could they go for a safe haven? England? Yes, perhaps England. But who? Who would take them in? Vouch for their visas. Speak for them. They didn't have a soul in England. Only Hilda's desperate determination drove her through all the bureaucracy. She said the red tape was endlessly long. There was usually a two-year waiting period for immigration to the United States. But she finally saw the American chief consul in Vienna, and he got her a permit as a Jewish refugee child. At age 16, she could still qualify as a child. Her parents couldn't leave yet, but she moved to England on August 15, 1938. And finally, the Quakers located the family who would take her in. And in October of that year, she became part of the Rosemere family in Crowley down in Sussex. And a close friend of her son, Rob, who was away at college, and of their daughter, Brenda, who was her own age. It was like a dream come true, the end of a nightmare. Now she could go to work and somehow bring her parents over to England. But then the nightmare struck again the very next month. For on November the 9th, 1938, came Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass, seven years ago last Sunday. It was the night when the Nazis burned all the synagogues of Germany and Austria and vandalized all Jewish businesses. And Hilda's parents, Julius and Evelyn Carmel, were still there. They'd already lost their lovely home and their antique furniture store. And now they were in real danger of losing their lives. But the Rosevere 
lawyers went to work on rescuing them. And they finally got them visitors visas as domestic servants. Major Rosemary had been in the British Foreign Service in Burma for 17 years. And he knew how to accomplish these things. And so during the summer of 1939, you know, his parents also arrived in Sussex and were reunited with their daughter. And just in time, because World War II began on September the 3rd, 1939, when the Germans bombed Warsaw, Poland, and no Jews traveled to England in wartime. No. All Jews were taken to Auschwitz. The Rosevears and all their Anglican friends and clergy made Hilda at home exactly as she was, never tried to convert her. They respected her Jewish identity. They invited her, however, to be involved in their church just as much as she liked. For example, when she stayed with Canon Williams and his family in the rectory of Balsham near Cambridge, she typed up the rector's sermons in order to work on her English. She helped his daughter Nancy teach a Sunday school class. And when Nancy played the ancient organ for the choir and Sunday services, an organ that had to be pumped by hand, that too was something Hilda loved to do. That was my job, she says, pumping that organ. Quite a lot of church for a Jewish kid. <laughs> she came to love the Church of England and the Anglicans, especially at Christmas with all the candles and the carols. The Rosemary's had brought her into the time of peace and love, hope, and joy. We can't even imagine what a new life that must have been for her. Hilda's American visa came through in November 1939, and she sailed for New York. Her parents couldn't follow and join her in Chicago until 1943. But all of these 70 years since, she has never forgotten those Christian people, William and Marjorie Rosemary, who were her light in the darkness. She is presenting this painting of Hilda of Whitby, a light in the darkness, presenting it to this Anglican cathedral in honor of the Rosemary's today. Every time we look at this painting, let us think of them. And let us remember Jesus' words to us all. You now are the light of the world, he says. You are the light of the world. Let your light show sign before, so shine before the world that all may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Yes, who needs us to be their light in the darkness today? Amen. And now please join me in welcoming back and thanking our own Jewish Hilda, Hilda Pierce, and her husband Herman Slutsky. Will you both stand?